Hi there. My name is Dr. Farhan Lalani. I'm a hospitalist at UCSF, and today we're going to discuss hyperglycemia in the hospitalized patient. More specifically, we'll discuss glycemic goals in hospitalized patients, types of commonly used insulin in hospitalized patients, and how to use insulin to manage hyperglycemia in these patients. In general, in hospitalized patients, what we want to do is avoid the extremes. We want to avoid severe hypoglycemia as well as hyperglycemia. What we generally use is for ICU patients, we try to keep their glucose between 140 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. And for non-ICU patients, we try to keep their glucose between 100 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. And we do this because we know that people who have elevated glucose values in the hospital have higher morbidity and mortality. We generally use two types of insulin, short-acting and long-acting. Short-acting insulin are used, are, short-acting insulins are used for prandial and sliding scale dosing. This includes insulins like Lispro and Aspar, as well as regular insulin. Long-acting insulins are used for basal coverage, and these include insulins like Clargene, as well as Detamir. So how do we manage hyperglycemia? Firstly, we don't use sliding scale insulin alone. When you use isolated sliding scale insulin, what that does is it creates something of a roller coaster effect. For example, if a patient has a significantly elevated glucose and receives sliding scale insulin, their glucose precipitously drops. But because we haven't provided them a basal insulin here, their glucose eventually rises back up, then they get more sliding scale insulin, then it comes back down. This creates this roller coaster effect that is suboptimal. So in most patients, it's best to mimic physiologic insulin secretion, and we do that via using the basal bolus method. So how do we actually dose this in the hospital? If, pa if, a, if your patient has, is already on insulin at home, um, generally what we will do is continue their home insulin regimen, but do it at a decreased dose. A good place to start is something like 70% of their home dose of insulin. If the patient is very ill, you want to discontinue their oral hypoglycemic medications as well. How do you start insulin de novo? We generally use a weight-based approach. We start with 0.3 to 0.5 units per kilogram. In specific cases like renal failure or liver failure, we back off on that dosing a little bit and we use 0.15 to 0.2 units per kilogram. We give half of, those, half of that insulin as a basal dose and half of that insulin as prandial doses throughout the day. And then on top of that, we add sliding scale insulin. How do you know if the insulin you're giving your patient is effective and is the right dose? For short-acting insulin, you wanna check their glucose levels a few hours later. In general, that means prior to their next meal. And for long-acting insulin, you want a fasting glucose level, which is usually in the morning before they've had breakfast. And remember, if a patient becomes NPO for any reason, remember to continue their basal insulin. So let's do a quick case and demonstrate these concepts. A 62-year-old male uh, is admitted with COVID-19. His glucose levels on admission are between 250 and 350. He weighs 100 kilograms and has normal renal function. Using our previous calculation, we do 0.3 units per kilogram times his 100 kilograms, and that gives us 30 units. Because we want to split these 30 units between basal and prandial, we're going to give him 15 units of Lantus at bedtime and we're going to give him five units of aspart with each meal. On top of this, we'll add sliding scale insulin. So let's say on day one, these are his glucose values, and this, this is the insulin that he received. How do you adjust the insulin on day two to ensure that he has better glycemic control? Starting with his AM glucose value on day two, we see that it's 192, which is outside of the desired range. This is reflective of the 15 units of glargine that he got the night before. So on hospital day two, we wanna give him a bigger dose of glargine at bedtime. We see here between breakfast and lunch, the patient's glucose level stayed relatively flat. What that tells us is that the nine units of insulin that the patient received with breakfast, the five units prandial, and the four units for a sliding scale is likely enough to keep his glucose levels flat with breakfast. So on day two, we're gonna give him nine units of aspart with breakfast. Similarly, between lunch and dinner, we see that his glucose went from 308, which is outside of the desired range, and came down to 171, which is within the desired range. What that suggests to us is that it is likely that the five units of aspart that he received was likely enough to keep his glucose levels flat, and the six units of aspart that he received for his sliding scale was likely enough to bring his glucose levels down into the desired range. 
What that means is that on hospital day two for lunch, we're gonna give him the same five units of Aspar. Similarly, between dinner and bedtime, you'll see that the patient's glucose went from 171 down to 72, from the desired range down to a hypoglycemic range. What that should suggest to us is that the five, and, the five units of aspart that he received as his cranial dose is likely too much and that we should try to dose reduce the next day. In summary, don't use insulin sliding scale alone. Dose insulin based on weight and remember that dosing is an iterative process and that you should adjust daily. New York, we love you. Stay strong. <laughs>